everyone. I hope you are all safe and healthy in Berwyn, Pennsylvania, and I'm delighted to be speaking with you today. My name is Chandra Prasad, and I'm the author of Damselfly, which I believe all of you are reading. So it's my pleasure to answer some of the questions you guys came up with. Um, there were a lot of really great questions, and I'll answer a few at a time. Uh, the first question I received was, what inspired you to write this book? And the answer is that um, I actually thought of the idea for the book back when I was in 8th in grade. Um, back when I was in 8th grade a long time ago, I had to read Lord of the Flies, um, which, as many of you may know, is a survival book by William Golding um, that features British schoolboys who are uh, um, isolated on a tropical island and left to fend for themselves, and they have to survive. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It's it's a fabulous book. It's it's dark. It's gritty. It's uh, filled with many allegorical levels and themes and symbolism. So it's just got a lot in it. Um, but the only thing I didn't like about it was that there were no girls, and so. Ever since that time, when I read that book, I've kind of secretly wanted to write my own survival book that was similar to it in terms of location and theme, um, but having girls front and center. So that's what Damselfly has, as you guys know. Um, Samantha is the protagonist, and um, Ritika is the antagonist. So you have two, two females. The next question is, how long did the book take to finish? That's a great question, and um, I think authors will give you different answers to that because there are actually different times when the book is, is done. Um, it took me about a year to write the book, but then it takes another year for your editor and copy editor to go through the whole process of um, cleaning up the book, perfecting the book, and making it, you know, as clean and ready as possible. So it took a year to write and then another year plus um, for the publishing process to go through and for me to go line by line and chapter by chapter with my editor to make it as, you know, as good as possible. Um, another question is, who is your favorite character in the story? Well, <laughs> um, everyone who reads the book is entitled to have their own favorite character or least favorite character, but mine happens to be Mel. Um, and the reason I like Mel so much is that because she knows a lot. She, uh, she's a survivalist, or her father is, a, is an, an adventurer that has given her a lot of survival training. And as you probably know, her mother's a botanist, so she knows a lot about plant life, um, and what's edible and what's not edible and, uh, you know, what she can do to survive in the circumstances that the kids have found themselves in. So I liked that she was so competent and um, so full of knowledge. And the other thing I liked about Mel a lot is that she doesn't really give in to peer pressure very much. She's not, um, she's really her own person and she's influenced by the people around her like Sam, but not, I, I think, not too much. Certainly not as much as some of the other people on the island. Um, and then the next question is, well, it's kind of a dual question. It's what made you think up a, question, a character like Sam and what made you think up a character like Ritika? Um, you know, it kind of goes back to the first question a little bit which is what, what inspired you to write this book. And um, part of it was that um, I, I really wanted strong female characters that I hadn't seen too much um, growing up. And so Sam specifically um, is biracial. So she's half Asian and she's half white. And um, I actually am also that exact um, breakdown. And what matters to me as an author and also as a parent at this point, is that uh, kids see characters like themselves reflected in their books. Because if you don't see yourself in any literature, uh, it's almost like being invisible. 
And the fact is that uh, we've gotten a lot better about having minority characters uh, and diverse characters being the headliners of books. Um, the, the numbers of diverse characters in uh, good YA literature has really gone up in the last 20 years. But um, there are still very, very few um, mixed race or multiracial characters. So it was important to me to include a character like that, and actually in my, um, which Sam is, but also in my next book, which is called Mercury Boys, it's another YA book, I will also have another mixed race character. So that was why I, that was why Sam is who she is. Um, and as for Ritika, uh, I wanted to have another female of color, which she is. She's um, Indian. And um, I kind of wanted to break away from any stereotypes that might be attached to her. Um, so I really think that she's someone unique that I haven't seen too much in literature before. Um, and I like that she is not only someone that thinks very selfishly, um, and, uh, you know, really thinks of herself first. I also like that the other characters kind of gravitate toward her because that's kind of happening a lot currently, um, politically with different people. And, um, seeing that it makes the book feel a little bit more timely. Um, but in addition to having Sam and Ritika being who they are, um, they also represent things greater than themselves. Um, actually, it would be more uh, Mel and Ritika if I were to make if I were to draw these big comparisons, because Mel cares about the good of the group. She cares about the community above herself. She's fairly unselfish about resources and helping, um, and so she represents kind of the good side of human nature. While Ritika, on the other hand, uh, lives very brashly, selfishly. Um, she doesn't care about her actions or the repercussions that they'll have. Um, she certainly doesn't care about the people that are more vulnerable, like Anne Marie. So, in that way, she reflects kind of the negative side of human nature, um, just as um, William Golding in his book also explores these these dual sides, which are also called the ego and the id. Um, I'm kind of doing that in the same way in Damselfly. So I'll answer one more question for today, and then I'll answer a few more um, tomorrow. But the last question for today is, did you learn fencing before, and why did you make them as a fencing team? And in fact, yes, <laughs> I did learn fencing before. Um, I went to a public school, but my public school, for whatever reason, had very, very old uh, fencing equipment. And they were not a wealthy school by any stretch, but they did have a fencing team and very ragtag clothes. So my fencing team back when I was growing up was nothing like this very nice, um, well-equipped fencing team that Drake Rosemont has. But yes, I fenced um, from about 8th grade to 12th grade, and I even did it a little into adulthood. And I love, I love fencing. It's a really, really exciting sport. It involves a lot of strategy. Um, it's a team sport, but it's also an in individual sport. So, um, yeah, I definitely took a little of my own experience and inserted that into the book. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.